Now that we have covered string interpolation and methods, it's time to talk about something called directives. Directives apply special reactive behavior to the render DOM. You will see what this means during the next couple of videos, but the easiest way to wrap your head around it is to see an example. Suppose that I want to link to my blog and I have the URL stored within the data object on the view instance. I have prepared the view instance in advance because it contains nothing that you haven't seen before. I've already created an empty link within the template as well. So how can we make the link point to the URL stored within the block URL data property? Could we just use string interpolation as we've seen before? Well, let's try. So I'll just enter the string interpolation syntax here and enter block URL to match the data property. Running this code and hovering over the link, we can see that things do not work as expected. The string interpolation syntax is output and the browser URL encodes it. This is because we cannot use string interpolation in any HTML attributes. Instead, we can use a directive named v-bind. So let me remove what we already had and I'll enter v bind here instead. The vbind directive binds attributes to an expression. Right now we haven't specified the attribute nor the expression, so let's do that. After the name of the directive we add a colon, followed by the name of the HTML attribute that we would like to bind to. In this case we are interested in the href attribute. So I'll simply write href right here. The last missing piece is the expression. In this case, we just need to access the block URL data property. So all we need to do is to add an equal sign followed by the expression enclosed within quotation marks. So the expression is going to be block URL referring to the data property that we have already defined. If I run the code again, we can see that it now works as intended. To recap, the syntax for directives consists of the name of the directive, a colon, an argument to the directive, and an expression. The reason I said that the second part of the syntax is an argument to the directive rather than an HTML attribute name is that the attribute name is actually an argument to the vbind directive. So this syntax is used for directives in general and the vbind directive takes an argument which is the name of the HTML attribute to bind to. Now not all directives take arguments as we'll see in the coming videos. The last part of the directive syntax is the expression. In this case we just refer to a data property but for other directives we can also refer to methods. Now I mentioned earlier that directives apply reactive behavior to the DOM. In this case, the HTML element in the DOM is updated automatically whenever the value of our block URL data property changes. I'm going to show this to you in one of the next lectures, so for now you'll just have to take my word for it. But what we're basically telling Vue.js in this example is to keep the href attribute up to date with the block URL property on the view instance. Directives are, as you have probably noticed, prefixed by v and a dash to indicate that they are special attributes that Vue.js will recognize. In fact, it's possible to write your own directives, which is something that we'll take a look at later. In this lecture, you have been introduced to the concept of Vue.js directives and its general syntax with the vbind directive being an example hereof. Don't worry if you didn't understand everything covered in this video, as we'll be working with a lot of directives throughout this course. In the next lectures, we'll be taking a look at more Vue directives, but first, it's time to practice what we've learned so far.